Um, <clears throat> I mentioned already this morning that uh, we have uh, been working, following the launch of the, of the um, cholera roadmap, we have been working on how to operationalize this in, at country level, how to go from a strategy to, to some plan, na NCPs we call them, National Cholera Elimination Plans, um, or in some cases, uh, National Cholera Control Plans, when we know that certain countries are not ready there yet for, for elimination. Um, and we know that these plans should be multi-sectoral um, and have, um, should have all this, the, the key components, all the pillars of, of cholera control. And what we're asking to the countries and to the GTSCC partners is to feed in um, this framework to discuss and agree what kind of specific activities we want to put in what I call this morning the, the cookbook for, for cholera elimination. And uh, it will be with two, with two work streams. There's going to be this, this practical guidance um, on how the, 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 the countries put together their plan and then a, a, a work that is undertaken more at the global level, all of us within the GTFCC, on how to the plans are received, uh, reviewed, and endorsed, um, so that then they can be used not only for technical um, achievement of the technical goals, but especially for advocacy purposes and for fundraising. Um, in a way, this this this. Uh, stream of thinking uh, originated with uh, the request for uh, oral cholera vaccination. And we know that countries submit a request, they want to receive, they submit vaccination plans which are reviewed by the, by the, by the GTFCC and then vaccines are allocated to, to tackle, contribute to, to cholera control in the hotspots. We wanted to move, as we said also this morning, from the uh, supporting of CV plans to supporting actually cholera elimination plans and request for, for cholera elimination. And the process that we are envisioning, um, uh, thanks also to, to the workshops of this uh, past uh, four or five years in countries and the processes that the countries have presented today, we envision uh, five steps in this, uh, in this NCP development. The first one is the country si signaling the interest. This is more of a theoretical step. It's more of a, um, the country demonstrating a strong political engagement. And we've seen that all the countries that have presented this morning um, have s different ways of signaling it. But ultimately is about putting cholera high up in, in the political agenda. Uh, the good example from uh, our friend <laughs> Francis from, from Zambia, that has, um, the country signaled the, the interest by putting the cholera program not just in one minister, but under, uh, directly under the responsibility of the vice president. This is a good way of, of signaling this in, in this first step. The second step, once we signal the interest, is conducting a situational analysis and seeing uh, exactly where the country is with regards to the cholera risk and also the capacity to, to control cholera. And uh, linked, very much linked, it doesn't have to be necessarily sequentially, of course. It's establishing these uh, multi-sectoral cholera control plans, um, which should not be in silos, should not be uh, only covered by, say, the Ministry of Health or the Ministry of Infrastructure, but they should be really a multi-sectoral uh, cholera control, uh, country-driven effort. Once this program is established, then there is the developing the actual plan, the NCP, and this is where exactly the framework will guide the countries on, on how to do it, including, of course, the, the budget. And then um, the, the plan is, is uh, uh, endorsed by the country, launched, and uh, um, hopefully endorsed also by the GTFCC and, and by, the, by the donor community. So the first step, the first technical step that we are going to discuss uh, in, uh, in the working group, especially in group one, is the, the situational analysis. 
which is basically identifying where the problem is so to address it is the classic uh, information for action uh, type of, uh, of <laughs> uh, mantra in public health. And you, you, um, the countries look at the historical color epidemiology, they map the, their hotspots, and then they evaluate also contextual factors, not necessarily linked to the, to the, um, to the color epidemiology, but to define what is actually a, a, an area uh, at risk of cholera. And this is what we're asking the OCV work, the, the WASH working group this afternoon to help us with. Um, we know that uh, if there is cholera and it, if, if a hotspot is hit by, if an area is hit by cholera every year with a high incidence, well, we know that this is a hotspot. But what about areas that don't have cholera for many years, example, for example, of, of Zimbabwe, but that have contextual factors that uh, make them at risk of cholera, is this considered a hotspot or not? And what type of factors do I have to measure to define my hotspot in, in that way? Um, we have been, um, there was a, often a remark by the, by the WASH uh, working group experts saying that we focus a lot on, on epidemiology and we don't consider the, these contextual factors that are as important. So this is going to be the opportunity for the WASH expert to tell us what type of indicators uh, we need to consider. And of course, uh, it will be important for the situational analysis, but then for the whole planning process of uh, um, deciding which interventions are needed where and uh, for the eventual monitoring and evaluation. And these are the, the classic um, six pillars of, um, of the NCP, starting with surveillance, which is the early detection uh, and confirmation of cholera and the actual monitoring of, of the cases, which guides the, the first one is the, the case management or management of, of care, as we put here, and the WASH intervention, the OCV, the community engagement, and the overall coordination piece. Um, like we were saying, a lot of, the, of these uh, reflections have started already in the OCV working group with defining the hotspots, and now we are attempting with this working group to, um, to do this, the similar reflections with the, with the WASH, and uh, in April we will have the surveillance working group trying to piece everything together um, to provide uh, uh, the country not only with the NCP framework but also with specific technical guidance on how the hotspot should be identified. And we are hoping that the whole process will be completed by the GTFCC in June uh, so that we can launch this, um, this uh, technical guidance for, for countries. Um, this is, is basically the, the, again, the, the first step. Um, establishing a, a national core program, um, setting the, the, the program goals, and agreeing on key activities to, to achieve these goals. So once we have done the situational analysis, of course, it's easy to, to plan the, easy <laughs> enough to plan what needs to be done with timelines, responsible parties, and, and budgets. <laughs> And uh, this is the, the slide summarizing the, the, the endorsement process, so not the country level exercise, but the exercise that is requested by the GTFCC in terms of uh, reviewing and supporting the countries in, in uh, tailor making, uh, making these this, uh, this plans. And the consultation will work a bit like we were saying in a similar manner to the the assessment of the OCV request, but it will be much broader, with a subset of individuals from each working group that will be asked to provide detailed feedback on these plans, high-level consultations with, uh, with uh, each uh, working group via emails or online and during the working groups or during the annual meeting, and um, um, we, we hope that the, 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 this, this whole process will be, will be con uh, finished by, by, by June 2019. We have already circulated to most of you, if not all, the, the draft framework, and some of you, a, a subcommittee has been asked to provide detailed feedback in their, in their areas of expertise. 